Are you doing Holacracy? Are you doing Holacracy? Hmm. No mention of governance meetings, no mention of tactical meetings, no mention of the Constitution. This is not Holacracy. Hey guys, it's Jonathan. Uh, it's a new year and I just got some new equipment, so I wanted to give it a little test run. New article came out today. Uh, that's what we're going to talk about. So, uh, I'm Jonathan. I'm here to help you work better together with uh, information about holacracy and self-management. And let's move on to this, uh, this article here. So there's an article that just came out called Extinction, Extinction Rebellion is Using Holacracy to Scale Its International Movement by Amy Groth. Um, and I'm a holacracy coach. Uh, I've been doing it for several years. And I can just tell you, basically, like you, I see the word holacracy, but everything I can see says that this is not holacracy. Um, and I kind of wish that, you know, Amy would have done a little more homework here. I, I think that it's probably sexy to talk about holacracy as like this thing that, that this group is doing. Um, I'm not really here to comment about the actions of Extinction, Extinction Rebellion or what they do or how they're doing it. Uh, my opinion is that um, using, a, using an effective organizational system is a good thing, but man, holacracy is a complicated, nuanced thing that really deals with power in a very delicate way. And I just really doubt that, um, based on what I've seen, that what they're doing is really anything close to it. So let's just break it down a little bit. So one of the things she says is, a key to its success, choosing an effective organizational model early on informed by the latest management science. And if I click this link, it's a link to an article that doesn't really have anything to do with management science. Even saying that, there's not a lot of science, management science backing up holacracy. It's not a scientific system. It was built for tactical purposes. It was built for people doing work. Um, so saying that it's informed by the latest management science isn't really true. Uh, she goes on to say, XR is a decentralized network designed to resemble a holacracy, an operating system structure, an operating structure for self-organization tested by tech companies like Google, Zappos, and Medium. Um, I think she meant to say holarchy, not holacracy. So a holarchy is a system of pieces where each piece is uh, complete in, in itself and also part of a larger whole. Um, it sounds like what she's describing here is a decentralized network designed to resemble a holarchy um, or in the shape of a holarchy, not holacracy necessarily. Um, there are other systems out there that I'll talk about in, in a minute that use similar principles but are not holacracy. She goes on to say, anyone can join XR as long as they adhere to its 10 core principles and values, including a commitment to nonviolence. Um, that has nothing to do with holacracy. Uh, holacracy is a rule book. It's called the, there's a document called the Holacracy Constitution. It's a 53-page uh, document that describes how to make decisions and how power works in organizations that adopt it. Um, there are no values in the document. There are duties. So if this said something like, anyone can join XR as long as they commit to um, serving the duties described in some operating agreement, some operating document. Uh, one of the great things about Holacracy is that it doesn't require any values. In fact, that's part of why I love it. It's a system that is values agnostic. It doesn't require that you believe this or that or have this value or that value. You just simply need to maintain certain duties with, how, with, with which how you work with others. So that's a little frustrating. While Holacracy 2 has received its share of criticism, yes, it has, I agree with that, the system is credited for providing basic framework for effective self-organization. I totally agree with that. Um, and then she goes on to pull out this little quote about uh, that Brian Robertson said at a training once seven years ago, described his creation as providing a rule system for anarchy. Um, yeah, so I think if you get into what the word anarchy really means, um, there's nothing wrong with rules in anarchy. It's rulers that are a problem. I'm not an anarchy expert, uh, so I won't go into too much there, but it's kind of a, um, it's kind of an inflammatory statement, uh, the, the way that's written. It looks like it's written to get views, not so much to be accurate. Let's keep going. 
Extinction Rebellion's embrace of holacracy makes it, makes it the largest scale use case to date. So, so far, I haven't seen any evidence that they're actually doing anything similar, like resembling holacracy, except using the word. And then she says, eclipsing Amazon-owned Zappos, high-profile trials with holacracy, including 1,500 employees. At this point, I wouldn't call them trials. They've been doing holacracy for many years and doing it successfully. Um, in fact, I directly asked some, uh, some employees at Zappos recently during the Responsive Org conference, are you doing holacracy? And they said yes. So calling it trials, I think, is kind of uh, putting a value judgment on, on it. Um, and saying it's the largest scale use case to date, just because you have a lot of people in an organization, unless they're all doing tactical meetings and governance meetings, unless they have roles and they've agreed to the, to the terms of the Constitution, which XR isn't even doing, I wouldn't think you could really say that this is an implementation of holacracy. It's just completely inaccurate. Um, what might have been a better thing to say, just so we're not completely negative here? Mm -hmm. Extinction Rebellion's embrace of distributed self-organization makes it the largest scale use case to date. Eh, okay. Um, though how much training is there, really? And we get to that in a little bit. So she goes on to say, like Zappos, which has quietly backed away from certain tenets of the system, I don't know about quietly, they've built upon it, and has begun to experiment with its own, modified version of holacracy, XR is also taking a broader interpretation of holacracy. That I would agree with. XR is taking a broader interpretation of holacracy. That's like saying, um, I'm a vegan and I have a broad interpretation of what veganism is, I eat meat. It's just not accurate. So holacracy is a 53 page rule book. You can go to a training, you can learn the rules, you can discuss the rules. Um, what we're talking about here is not holacracy. They go on to say, we're not dogmatic about using holacracy. It's an adaptive version. Well, that may be true. It, then it's not holacracy. Um, and even if you tweak it a little bit here and there, I can understand wanting to do that, though all the rules are there for specific reasons to create um, a system where power is, is organized in a certain way, to create a system that doesn't leak power or allow people to take advantage of the system. I don't think what they're doing here is anything close to that. Um, well, I'll go on to give you a few examples. Amy goes on to say, XR is not formally engaging Holacracy One services. Instead, its leadership has trained itself using online videos with guidance from advisors. Um, an NVC advisor, which there's nothing NVC in Holacracy. Uh, it's, it's almost the opposite. It doesn't require empathy to do Holacracy, so I don't know why you would get training from an NVC expert. And not to shit on NVC, I think it's wonderful. Um, I think it's a really good good gift to the world. It's just not useful in this context if you're talking about learning holacracy. And then an, uh, a consultant who worked for McKinsey, I don't know what McKinsey has to do with holacracy, and then he talks about uh, Frederick Lelou's book, Reinventing Organizations, which does. Yes, it does. That doesn't mean that any of these people know much about holacracy itself. Let me say a little bit more about that. XR is not formally engaging Holacracy One's services. Well, I, I just took a look, and if you go to the Holacracy website on the providers page, they don't have to hire Holacracy One to help with this. There are lots of people that do Holacracy consulting. Um, they're all, they all have the, the skills and qualifications to do that. So if they wanted to, they could get training on this. They just didn't. Um, which makes me think, no, this is not holacracy. So let's go on to this next section. In this next section, Amy titles Circular Logic. Ah, oh, where to begin? The defining feature of a holacracy is its circular hierarchical structure, which is quite different from the static pyramid hierarchies most organizations employ today. So the, the defining, this is not accurate. The, the defining characteristic here is not the, not the how the picture looks, whether it's a, a, a circular hierarchy or a pyramid hierarchy. The defining characteristic is that it's a dynamic hierarchy that changes and that the roles are separate from the people that fill them. And that is also dynamic. So calling this like a circular hierarchical structure, no, you could call it a, you could call it a, a hierarchical, hierarchical structure. It totally is. 
You could call it a holarchical structure. It is. But circular, calling it circular implies that you have like, um, like a directed graph that has circular dependencies where a node in the graph points back to a node earlier in the graph. So it's really a misuse of language to call it a circular hierarchical structure. Um, I just wanted to point that out. She goes on to say, the flattened hierarchy combined with a focus on granular roles over broader job titles. Let's just stop there for a sec. So a lot of people get this wrong. Holacracy is not flat. It's not a flattened hierarchy. There are actually, there's actually more specificity in terms of what the people do. Um, so calling it a flattened hierarchy is not accurate. Um, and then saying, with a focus on granular roles over broader job titles. So Holacracy does focus on uh, roles, and they do have a lot of detail in them. But at the broadest level, those roles are very general. In fact, they sometimes can just have a purpose or a couple of accountabilities. And then it's the work of the people in that role or circle. It's the, it's the job of the people who have been assigned to that vague description to break down the work into something more concrete and finite. Um, to say that the a focus to say that there's a focus on granular roles, I can get where she's coming from with that, and that's you know not entirely inaccurate. But really, it's it's a focus on the right amount of granularity, and a role can be very very vague, and often they are. They might just have a name and a purpose. Sometimes you can just have a name and a name and a domain. You know, that was a surprise to me. Um, so there's nothing that actually says that these roles need to be granular. Just that holacracy gives us the facility to make them as specific as needed. So let's look at this next section. Reflecting basic holocratic structure, XR has a number of core circles that focus on everything from finance to fundraising. So there's nothing fundamentally different about that than any other organization, whether it's a traditional management hierarchy or a holacracy powered organization. They all have core groups that are responsible for things from finance to fundraising. Um, there's really only one circle that's core in Holacracy. It's the broadest circle. And then the rest of them are defined by the organization. So Holacracy itself doesn't dictate that you have any particular number of circles, shapes of circles, contents, anything like that. Uh, so this is not reflecting a holocratic structure to say that you have a finance team and a fundraising team. It's just completely inaccurate. She goes on to say, the core circles and representatives, she goes on to say, the core circles send representatives to the main circle. Okay, those are called circle leads, sometimes called lead links. And yes, there is a representative from each circle that goes to the meetings of the broader circle. So we got that one right, Amy, nice job. Moving on led by XR co-founders and these people. Uh, use of the word led by is not holacracy. The circle is facilitated by the facilitator. The secretary helps maintain the records during the meetings, but there's no leader. There's no formal leader. The facilitator is the closest person. You might say facilitated by, and then the person who has the facilitator role. And their job is just to be a referee. It's not to make decisions or, or enforce values. So, even at the broadest level here, what's being described is not holacracy. It's completely inaccurate. Um, there is no leader in a holacracy circle. There is a, cir there's a, there is a circle lead. There's a role that's accountable for representing the purpose of the circle and assigning uh, resources and prioritization. And those things are all written down. But to say led by is not accurate. Then she goes on to say, feedback loops run quickly, both downstream and upstream. Those in core roles are empowered to make decisions as they see fit, so long as they consult with others who have expertise in order to make thoughtful decisions. So uh, for one thing, this notion of core roles, that's not, that's, that's not what a core role is in Holacracy. There is a thing called a core role. Um, it's, it's one of the built-in roles. It's the circle lead, the facilitator, the secretary, and the rep link. Those are the four core roles. And they have nothing to do with making the decisions of the circle per se, uh, except for the circle lead. Um, 
But that's just the language thing, and I'm not trying to like pick apart every little detail, though I'm definitely doing that. She goes on to say, so long as they consult with others who have expertise in order to make thoughtful decisions. So I think this is a pretty common misunderstanding. This is what's called an advice process. And you see advice processes a lot in like teal organizations and next gen organizations, but Holacracy doesn't have an advice process. It has um, integrated decision-making and it has uh, a process whereby people are invited to give a reaction and then people are invited to object but you don't have to seek, like you don't have to consult to get their, their. Um, you don't you don't have to consult with people who have specialized knowledge. That's nowhere in the in the constitution. It's nowhere in any of the practices that are defined by holacracy. Now you could create those processes, and that's great. But it's not holacracy. Anyway, more complex decisions involve integrated decision making, a process where all proposals need to pass with no objection. So that is a thing in holacracy, integrative decision-making. It's used in the governance process, not in the tactical process. Uh, and let's see what happens when we click this link. How do you make decisions? We use different decision-making thresholds that are appropriate and practical and chosen by each area. OK, what are the criteria for that? The coordination of circles uses an integrated decision-making process which intends to support collaboration and creativity by needing all proposals to pass with no objection. Okay, so the article is accurate in that things need to pass with no objection, but there's nothing here about what integrative decision-making really is. I mean, we can talk about that if, we, if you want to. So it's not hard to look up what integrative decision-making is. We can go and look at it right here, and we can see this section under objections and integration. And in, integrated, integrated decision-making just means identifying harm and then finding a way to address the harm. Um, and this integration process is what happens if you have a valid objection. We're not gonna get into all the details here. I just wanna point out that what they're describing in the article, integrated decision-making, is not what it is in Holacracy. So congratulations on using some system uh, and rule set for making decisions, but it's not Holacracy IDM. She goes on to say, the movement has learned from the mistakes of Occupy Wall Street, which is weighted down with uh, crowded general assemblies and decisions made by consensus. Yeah, I totally appreciate that. And then she talks about, Holacracy is designed to protect against that kind of gridlock by empowering individuals to act with full sovereignty within the scope of their roles. Yes, this is holacracy or a uh, holacracy principle, empowering individuals to act with full sovereignty within the scope of their roles. What she leaves out is according to the rules of the Constitution, American law, um, you know, what What's missing here is what, according to what rules, empowering individuals to act with full sovereignty within the scope of their roles, according to a set of rules that is not defined here. So again, ah, this is the, it's the principle is there, but what's missing is adherence to a strict rule set that's documented, an explicit rule set. Again, just empowering individuals to act with free sovereignty within the scope of their roles, great, but not holacracy. It's missing um, some really important stuff having to do with how you can do that safely according to a set of rules like the holacracy constitution and according to certain duties like the duty of transparency and so on. So again, not holacracy. Harrington notes that the average XR protester probably would not even know that they are operating within a holacracy. Well, they don't because they're not. Though the group does hold training sessions on holacracy in various chapters. People know holacracy by the processes we have. It's curious to me that the most important part of this quote, people know holacracy by the processes we have, uh, is paraphrased. Uh, Amy, can you shed some light on what the original um, speaker of this quote actually said? Because it sounds kind of like you're tweaking it. Um, but let's go back to that previous sentence. Though the group does hold training sessions on holacracy in various local chapters. So she's nice enough to give us a link. We can click through and we go to the self-organizing system, 
holacracy training. So they call it holacracy training, I, I guess. Um, but if you look at what they talk about in this training, there'll be information and discussion on how groups can use SOS effectively. The trainings include the principles beh behind holacracy, uh, the mandates, roles, and working groups. Okay, so, so that's not holacracy. How to be a point person, that's not holacracy. Different ways to do decision-making effectively. Hmm. Um, it's not integrated decision-making according to the Constitution, so that's something f probably well beyond it. It seems to me that in this case, this SOS group is using the term very loosely, potentially using it just because it gives them something to hang their hat on. There are other frameworks, though, um, other frameworks that are more that more accurately describe what XR is doing. And my point here is not to beat up on XR for what they're doing or how they're doing it. It's just that just to say that there's a thing called holacracy and it has a specific meaning, and this ain't it. Um, we'll talk a little bit more about that in a second. So moving on, she says, uh, David Thorson, who has explored the concept of societal and ecological collapse through his podcast, participated in UK protests this past autumn. While he wasn't initially aware of XR's holocratic design, should be holar hol holarchical design, um, he observed that anyone was empowered to act as they desired so long it was within accordance with the movement's principles. So long as it was within accordance with the movement's principles, that sounds a lot more like, I don't know, but something really bad. Like, um, some sort of a, a, a tribalism, right? As long as you do what we believe, then you're okay. That's not holacracy. Holacracy doesn't require beliefs. It just requires rules. And that's why I love it. And that's why this is wrong. She goes on to say, transparent information flow is a core tenant of holacracy because it fosters trust. That's not right. To say that transparent information flow is a core tenant of holacracy is not accurate. There is a duty in the Constitution for transparency, which simply means that if somebody um, on your circle asks you for a projection, like when you think you'll have something done, you need to give it to them. If they ask what your priorities are, you need to explain that. But it's not transparency, and it's not uh, this notion of a transparent flow. If I'm working in a holacracy-powered organization, I have no right to know what somebody of Circle Over is doing. Now, I can go and ask them, and it's probably good to do that if I have a question that affects my roles. But even if they're in a different circle, they have no duty to answer my question. So to say that transparent information flow is a core tenet of holacracy is not accurate. Uh, now, there are, are mechanisms for moving information around. We have rep links that can take tensions up from lower circles to broader circles and ways to get information from the broader circle down. Uh, with pri priorities are set at the highest level and they come down. Um, but the way it's written here is not really accurate. The rest of the article talks a little bit about um, kind of the nature of people who are involved in XR. And um, I think it's pretty enlightened. She talks about how a lot of the people who are involved with this work um, have done their inner work and their shadow work, and they sort of know themselves, which is wonderful. Um, and I think that's useful for any team, anybody, whether it's management hierarchy or holacracy or something else. Now, I dug into it a little bit more, and I thought maybe there's some holacracy hiding in there somewhere. If you click through for, if you click into two or three of the links, you can find this document, Briefing for Extinction Rebellion Regional and Local Coordinators, and they talk about an outline for running meetings. And as I was doing this research, my thought was, okay, where are the governance meetings? Where are the tactical meetings? Those are things we have in holacracy. Um, so surely the general meeting outline is going to be about how to do a tactical meeting, right? Um, okay, so we have silence and check-ins. Split people into groups of three to introduce themselves. Well, that's, that's a modification of check-in round. Update on the rebellion. Upcoming action plans, I project updates, kind of, maybe. Um, and then um, re, uh, regen reminder, read out the 10 principles and values. It sounds more like something you'd see at an AA meeting than a holacracy meeting. Break into working groups or attend intro session. So this is not a tactical meeting. This is not a governance meeting. This is not a holacracy meeting. Um, and this was the most relevant part I could find in this in this document here. So this points out that even the people that are uh, working at XR don't know what they're talking about when it comes to holacracy. 
The rebellion will work in a structured and decentralized way based upon feedback and autonomy to get on with tasks. Holacracy principles. And if we click through, we get a link to the Holacracy website. So, K. Okay. So, yeah, you're referencing Holacracy. Uh, shift in power, define roles, new governance processes, best practices, and software. There's nothing concrete behind the assertion that this is holacracy principles. The rebellion will work in a structured and decentralized way based upon feedback and autonomy to get on with tasks. Yeah, kind of, but that's also true of sociocracy and other systems. So if you want to do things as XR, you can. We suggest you get advice and feedback. There's no advice process in Holacracy. Eh. Um, from at least two people, eh, no, it's not. That's, there's nothing about having to get uh, advice from two people in Holacracy. Now, you can, in a governance meeting, create a policy that has a, has a mechanism in it where you might need a no objection from two people or you might want to get consultation from two people, but it's not in the core document. And you could have a similar policy in any organization, whether it's uh, decentralized or centralized, hierarchical, holarchical. So to say that um, we suggest you get advice and feedback has nothing to do with holacracy. They go on to talk about how they have some infrastructure and so they must have some degree of centralization. Um, I think something they're missing here is that holacracy is actually highly centralized and supports centralized structures. It also supports decentralization and autonomy. There's really nothing in Holacracy about fault tolerance or redundancy or some of the things that they might be pointing towards. Another thing that I noticed here is that the document talks about um, the notion that this is good enough and should be reviewed in January 19. Now, when we talk about good enough, this actually comes from sociocracy, and Holacracy adopted it, but the notion of something being good enough for now and safe enough to try is, um, is, is something that you see in sociocracy. In fact, I think the safe enough to try piece came from holacracy and was rolled back into sociocracy. Um, but a lot of the systems we're talking about here are more sociocratic than uh, holacracy. The document goes on to say a little bit more that I think should be pointed out. Um, coordination decision-making process. So this sounds like it must be something about holacracy-oriented decision-making, right? The coordination group is responsible for making decisions which affect the whole system. If such a decision is needed, then a written proposal is put on the agenda with minimum 48 hours notice and people are informed at the previous meeting. That's not holacracy. In holacracy, the agenda is created on the fly. You bring your attention. Anybody who's even been to a simulation knows that. So clearly this is not a group of informed people who are with regard to their implementation of holacracy specifically. I'm sure it's a very, very very intelligent group of people, um, but they're not doing holacracy. If there's no consensus to discuss it, even if it hasn't been given with sufficient notice, it can still go ahead. What consensus? There's no voting on which things to do. The facilitator in holacracy has the authority to choose the agenda item based on what they think is best for the circle, but they don't have to get consensus from anyone. If the meeting agrees, then it becomes policy. If the meeting agrees, then it become policy and is written into the action document for the whole rebellion. If there is no consensus, then three people from the group are delegated to take feedback from interested parties and make a decision within a set time limit. That sounds like a really leaky system and a really bad way to make authority work. Uh, it's not holacracy. Now there are some pieces in here that do sound a lot like something you might see in certain parts of holacracy. If at any point a person or people want to change it, then they can make a proposal. This is true. In a governance meeting, after something's been adopted, somebody can make a proposal to change it right after. And then on the tactical side, overall coordination. Make rapid tactical decisions after taking feedback. Well, in Holacracy, you don't need to take feedback. You can just make your decisions within the confines of your authority, which is well-defined. And then they go on to talk about um, the overall structure of the organization which is fine. This is drawn like with circles and lines. You can draw it with circles inside circles. You can draw it however you want. This is just a graph. A graph is an association between two things or more than two things. 
Um, so even the internal documents, as near as I can tell, have like very little to do with holacracy. Uh, it sounds to me like these guys wanted something that would be. It sounds like it sounds it sounds to me like these guys wanted to find a a good way to run their organization, which is a noble cause, and they went with what I consider to be the best solution out there, which is holacracy. But then they threw it all away. Then they said. Um, that's too hard or doesn't fit with us or doesn't give us the right power or we don't understand it. We don't understand why that rule is there. We're just not going to do it. So I just wanted to uh, kind of shed some light on this article. It's not a very accurate article and I think it's pretty sensational. And I really wish that Amy would have um, actually done some research and considered if what she was writing was clickbait or was like good news. Uh, I respect Quartz as an organization. You know, I, I like the stuff that they publish. I, I've, I read a lot of Quartz articles. Um, I really wish that Holacracy wasn't being used to promote, like, something sensational. Now, I think Holacracy is sensational. Um, anyway, if any of this uh, was interesting to you, please smash that like button. I would love a subscription. I would love to hear from you. Please feel, feel free to drop a comment. If you agree with me or disagree with me, you can come on. We can have a chat online. We can put it on YouTube, and we can get information out there in the world. Um, what I'm really all about is getting information out there in the world. So thanks for watching, and I wish you success in your self-management journey.